So I'm uh, the iceberg on GitHub, IH Norton, and pretty active on the mailing list. I may have responded to uh, some of your questions at some point. Um, oh, I, uh, I work in a, uh, my day job, I work in a chemistry lab in a neurosurgery department, so if either of those are interesting to you, um, come chat. So quick outline, um, talking about uh, the motivation for ClangJL and, and where you should use it, and a very brief introduction to uh, libclang itself and uh, the CAST. Um, so the motivation is uh, large libraries where you have uh, signatures that are tedious to write and maintain manually, especially for changing APIs. Um, as many of you know, Julia has an absolutely fantastic uh, CFFI. So for example, you have a C signature like that. The corresponding C call is, uh, is, very, is very simple. Um, a sim symbol for the, uh, the actual call, uh, the name of the library, and then the return type, and the argument type, and then the argument. Um, and the very nice thing about this, uh, as Tony was saying, is that there's no overhead. Um, the calls are di directly jitted, um, and you don't have to worry about having a, a C compiler available uh, to, uh, to compile your, uh, your wrappers, as, as you might in some other languages. Um, another, uh, just to set this up, background, um, Clang JL is used uh, by several packages, uh, including GTK and a couple of uh, CUDA wrappers, and uh, more recently a very nice uh, video I.O. package by Kevin Squire, um, which wraps uh, FFmpeg and um, whatever they're calling the new uh, fork of that, um, as well as a couple other ones, NIDAC and uh, GMT and WCS lib. Um, so, one thing that these have in common, as I mentioned, um, these are fairly large libraries. Um, GTK has, uh, I don't know, hundreds, probably maybe even thousands of, of uh, signatures. Well, probably hi high hundreds. Um, and the, o the other ones are, are fairly large as well. So just a quick introduction to Clang and, and libclang. Um, Clang is a C++ compiler built um, on the LLVM framework, framework, which is the compiler framework that is used by Julia and makes Julia fast. Um, it is modular and flexible and accessible, um, which uh, sort of distinguishes it from other C++ compilers, uh, open source compilers that are available, um, if some of you may be familiar with that. Um, that issue and, and some of the, the motivation behind uh, Clang as opposed to um, the other compilers and, and how they were designed. Uh, so libclang is a C API for a small portion of, of Clang. Um, it's mostly related to the, the AST, so um, walking the, the code representation. Uh, there's no, no access to the, the code gen parts, um, but just a, uh, a preview. Um, if you're not aware of it, see Keno's talk tomorrow um, where you can uh, access the full Clang API with CXX.jl and all sorts of other um, absolutely magical things. Um, so the libclang CAST is a tree of uh, what's called cursor nodes. And in the Clang.jl, um, access to that you import using Clang.cindex and basically call parse header with the name of a header, and that gives you the entry point, the top cursor, which is the, the, the top of the tree of nodes in the, in the AST. So for example, if you have C code de declaring a struct uh, called exstruct, and you have parsed this example header that, that uh, includes that, that C struct, you can find the cursor representing that struct with search, give it the name of the top cursor and the name of the struct, and then you can uh, inspect the, the sub-properties there. So the, the CAST, um, each cursor has, uh, has children, generally, and uh, those children have, have their own type, and they also have an associated, what's called a CX type. Um, so the, each, each cursor, in this case, is a field decal, so it's a declaration of a field of a struct, and those field decals have names associated with them, uh, kind, name, and data in this case. And the associated CX types are interesting. Um, they, they wrap the, 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 type of, uh, the type of the field 
and they can be walked uh, recursively. So for example, the second two fields here, the care star and the float star, um, those are uh, at the top level pointer types, but they have uh, a sub CX type, which is translated to, in, in this case, the, the Julia UN8 type for a care star. And likewise, uh, the pointer to the float is translated as well. So the wrapper generation, um, after a, a number of iterations, is, is fairly, uh, fairly accessible and easy to use. Um, basically, import clang.rapc and call this rapc init. Um, pass uh, a list of headers that you'd like to parse. As this is a C, C compiler, C++ compiler, you have to tell the compiler where it includes R. And you can also customize the arguments that the compiler is initiali initialized with, which can be, uh, can be useful and sometimes can be necessary on, on some platforms. You need to pass certain compiler arguments. And uh, I'll talk in a second about some of the customizations, but um, there are some, uh, some functions that allow you, 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 can, you can pass uh, handles to functions that allow you to customize the output and uh, do selection. And once that is initialized, you call the run function and uh, that generates your, your output. So customization, you can select headers. Um, one of the issues is that Clang parses everything and so you need to make sure that you're only uh, outputting the things that you want and not uh, trying to wrap all of libc or uh, the, the C standard library. Um, you can uh, set output files for different header groups, and, and one of the very useful things is callbacks to rewrite the generated expressions. So example output here um, for, for a C function with a return type of CX translation unit and two arguments is translated to a Julia function with a C call inside of it. And the reason that that's, that's done is to allow you to easily customize uh, the output if you want by, by manually um, adding some uh, setup or uh, teardown before and after the C call. So one, notice one of the arguments here is CX index. That's translated, that's a type def to a void star, and that's translated to a Julia type alias uh, to a pointer void. Um, another example output for a C struct, um, one of the internal, uh, internal C structs in uh, libclang itself, the CX cursor. Um, this has a, a, an enum and an int and then a, a, an array of, of uh, void star. And that's translated to this Julia type uh, CX cursor with um, automatic uh, translation of, of the enum type and then the other two fields. And one thing to point out with uh, Julia 0.3, um, since we don't have uh, fixed size array support, um, ClangJL automatically generates these uh, kind of gnarly array three pointer um, declarations which allow you to get structs that have the correct size. Um, with Julio 0.4, uh, very nicely, that will just turn into an end tuple, which is absolutely great. Um, pretty soon I'll be flipping the switch and using the by value struct passing support um, that Jameson merged, um, which will make Clang jail a little bit faster. And like I said, the end tuple support. Um, one question that, that comes up is when to use Clang JL. Um, there is some sort of uh, initial setup overhead. And so my suggestion is generally um, libraries with like over 100 calls um, where it's, it gets tedious to write everything out yourself. Um, it's pretty educational to write wrappers and it's pretty easy uh, to do so in Julia. So um, if it's a small API with 10 or 20 calls, just uh, probably do it manually, it's not, it's not worth the trouble. Um, one, one thing that some people have done is to bootstrap with ClangJL um, without developing a bunch of the customization. Um, they write out the, uh, the output once and then they customize everything and never use it again, which, which is a, a, a nice way to do things. It does save a little time. Um, finally, just acknowledge uh, people who have used or contributed to ClangJL, uh, Kevin, Tim, and the others. And sorry about running over, any questions? Yeah, any questions for me there? Okay.